The Flowers of Columbia on Ubloom is brought to you by Ahsoka Flores. Jay Schwanke, a fourth generation florist. I grew up running through my family's greenhouses with flowers all around me every day. I love flowers, everything about them, the color, the fragrance, wherever they are and wherever they come from, I'm fascinated. Join me as we explore the flowers of Colombia on ubloom.com. Travel with me to South America and the flower farms of Colombia. Together, we'll discover the diversity of flowers, learn about the culture of sustainability, and meet the people with a passion as we bring the flowers of Colombia to flower fans across the country and around the globe. Today, on the flowers of Colombia, we're with millions of carnations at Aura, and we're looking at how the farm and the people work together to create a culture of sustainability. So how many stems do you think you cut a year? Uh, for carnations, we cut over 20 million stems. And uh, for roses, we're about uh, 10 million stems. When I, when I was a little kid, we had a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And it was 70 feet long, 30 mm -hmm. feet wide, and we grew carnations. Okay. Not very many carnations, <laughs> but we grew carnations. We start cutting really early in the morning. Okay. Uh, like six in the morning. And we put 90 stems per net. Okay. Then we have like a trolley or a cable car. Right. and it's where we hang those nets. Then those nets go into the post-harvest, okay. where we have the racks. So we start putting the, the flowers in those racks, depending on the color. And then there is a guy that starts feeding the tables with those nets. So the carnations are grown in rice husks? Yeah, yeah. basically we're not able to grow the flowers directly on the soil. Okay. So we need to, to use the rice husk that comes from a place about four hours uh, from Bogota, is where the rice is grown. Uh -huh. We fill the beds with the rice husk, and, be, and then we start bringing the cuttings. So tell us a little bit about the horses and That's the cows. Right. Yeah, we have a, a total, the total size of the farm is 85 hectares. So 35 hectares are for the flower business, and 50 hectares are for the, for the horses and for the dairy farm. So we milk 160 cows. We produce over 4,000 liters per day. And we sell to Alpina, which is one of the main dairy companies in the country. And the horses is a hobby, you know. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm the president of the Colombian Draft Horse Association. So we work very close with, uh, with American breeders. One of the horses is the strongest horse in Colombia. That's right, that's right. We, we do what we call a pulling competition. Mm -hmm. And that horse won the competition last year, and that horse pulled 1,600 kilos. That's amazing. I'm a cage ranger grower in the Medellin area. And uh, I'm a pioneer on using uh, greenhouse operations for cage rangers, which is unique. And we can create different colors and different experiences for the clients. How many different varieties of hydrangeas do you grow? So far we have 25 different nat natural colors. Okay. So customers can access to different gradings and different colors, color type like this type of uh, right. we have. S small to big as my head. Exactly. They're huge, yeah. yeah. They're beautiful. Why did you choose Columbia to grow hydrangeas? Columbia, the managing area, is the perfect environment. It's high altitude and high humidity, which is the two things we need to grow hydrangeas. We have the motion from the Caribbean Ocean at, in the, at, at the Andes level. So this is where it meets. It doesn't meet in anywhere else. So we have high humidity, and that's where hydrangeas grow naturally. So we just develop into different varieties and different techniques, and that's where we get all the different colors. You grow flowers, you grow pom-poms in Colombia. Yes. Is it easier to grow them here? Yes, yes. Uh, the advantage we have here is that the fact that we're so close to the equator, the, we don't have seasons. So it's always, the climate is always, it's always the adequate climate to be able to grow flowers. The difference between our shortest night and our, no, and our longest night is very different. It's very, very small. Okay. It can be only like 20 minutes or a half an hour. That uh, fluctuation of, of the amount of light during the day is much bigger in the U.S. and not as big here.
Actually, this is the first time that I've got to see Elstermary in production. No way. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's such a popular flower. So you do so many things here on the farm for sustainability. Yes. You capture rainwater. Yeah, we're capturing 80% of the, of the water we use in, the, in our daily operations come from the rain. And then you, you work with the city nearby yes. and bring the gray water over. Exactly. We, we try to recycle all the water that comes from the nearby community. So we treat it and we use it too in, in our daily operation. Water comfort, conservation even goes down to when we walk, we see the, the rice hulls and around the Ulster area too, so that you're not, you're not overusing water. No, we're not overusing. We're always trying to use the, the, the right amount of water uh, because we are in the process to be Flor Verde, mm -hmm. so we need to, to, to follow the, 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 pra the good practices, the sustainable practices. You're also working the, the sustainability into this whole thing. You've got integrated pest management, the little bags. Yes. Tell, tell us about those little bags. Well, those little bags are medical quality weaves that uh, are a part of our integrated pest management system. What they do is they're a physical barrier that doesn't allow neither botrytis nor pests to get to the sweet tasting petals. And it's our way of not using pesticides to keep the flowers healthy. That's amazing. And you can use them three times. We use them three times, but we wash them every time because right. they do become infected with fungus, which is their job. To right, filter right. Through. We wash them and we even sow them here at the farm. And know that all of our garden roses, we've had to develop different techniques to treat different things in a, in a integrated pest management way. So we've got nets, we've got bags. The first bags we had were red. We thought that they would clear the ultraviolet rays. Now we use white because it diffuses the light and gets the color better. We use black nets, red nets, green nets, and oh, red wow. nets. Oh, that's amazing. What is it that you grow here? We grow proteus. Proteus, leucodendrons, pincushions, foliages, and we produce bouquets. In, with what we grow here, we have 51 types of products. So from here, we see Safari Sensa. Safari Sensa, that's our, the, the core production of our business is Safari Sensa. And then we're in fields of pins? This was, the, this was a trial field of pincushions and, and leucodendrons okay. and proteus. Proteus are usually produced at sea levels. Right. We're 9,500 feet above sea level. So, and we're in the equator, and usually proteus grow in the northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere. So when you have results like this, and close to the equator, you blew our minds away. Oh yeah. We had everybody that we spoke to said, you can't do it, you're crazy. <laughs> you're absolutely not. You won't be able to grow proteus anywhere in Colombia. And this is the result. And this is what so you're you doing. See the impossibility of growing produce in Colombia, and you will see the result. Right. Plus, we have had groundbreaking technology to be able to recover from the hard times in certain areas of production. Right. Which it's a, it's a groundbreaking for the whole industry. Growing proteas where fields have been infected with Phytophthora. Right. And be able to reproduce and grow again in those areas. Doing a lot of trials. Mm -hmm. Doing a lot of what ifs. Mm -hmm. The only way you can move forward is a going wrong, right. learning from your mistakes, and moving forward. That's so, that's so that's what we do here. Isn't it amazing how the people and the flowers come together to create a culture of sustainability? That's the flowers of Colombia. You would not have a tie on out here. Hold you would on. not have a tie on. No, oh, usually because people sign when they come. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Interview, take one.